Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa and I'm the owner of SeasonAndServeBlog.com. Today is a very exciting day because I'm giving you a tour of our brand new kitchen. So I'm gonna take you through the full kitchen. I'm gonna show you everything that's in our drawers and our cupboards and obviously the layout. And throughout the process, I'm gonna tell you about all the amazing things that we love about our kitchen. And at the end, I'm gonna share just a few regrets that we had with our kitchen renovation. Even though they're very small things, I do wanna share them just in case you're tackling a kitchen renovation so you can learn from what we did. Additionally, after we do our kitchen tour, I'm gonna to give you a tour of our sitting room because effectively when we did our kitchen renovation, we made our kitchen and the sitting room basically one big room and we did do a lot of work in our sitting room to improve it. So I do wanna share that with you as well. So without further ado, let me give you a tour of our dream kitchen. All right, so the first big thing that I wanna show you in our kitchen is our peninsula. And this wasn't here before kitchen renovation. There was actually a huge fireplace right in the middle here, and we had that removed. It was old, it was leaking, it didn't work. So we thought, better get rid of it so we can do our kitchen renovation and have this beautiful peninsula. So for the peninsula, we decided to go with storage on the inside and also the outside. We didn't want to do bar seating or anything like that because we're not like big bar seating people and we just didn't think we'd use it. We'd rather have the storage on the other side. So we love the peninsula and all the storage that it gives us and I love that it's a big open space and we can see directly through into the sitting room. And for the countertops on the peninsula and throughout the kitchen, we decide to go with a quartz countertop just because quartz is very durable. You can really beat it up and nothing really happens to it, which is really great for all the cooking that I do. So quartz was the top of our list, even though it is really expensive, but it is definitely worth it, I think. So we've had these countertops for a few months and we absolutely love them. It is a product from Caesar Stone and it's called Etera Blanca, but it has a very nice white base and it has these really nice taupe veins through it. It is very subtle, so you can't really see it from far away, but when you come up close, you can see all the beautiful veining in it. And I love that it is a warm color, not like a cool gray. I really think it is beautiful. And everyone who has seen the countertops has absolutely loved them. So it's a Terra Blanca from Caesar Stone. So for a peninsula and all of the other drawers and cupboards that we have in the kitchen, we actually went with Ikea cabinets and drawers and all of the drawers and cupboards have the faces on them and they all match and they're from the Axstad line. So it's a very nice modern shaker style and I think it's really nice for the sort of transitional design style that we have in our home. So very nice, very easy to clean and pretty durable so far. I'm very impressed with the Ikea cabinets and of course with Ikea, you have to have the soft closed drawers. I will never go back to not having soft closed drawers. Those are a luxury. Okay, now I'm gonna take you through the storage in our peninsula, and we're gonna start on the inside here with our first drawer. This is a five inch drawer, and I use it to store all of my utensils. Look at how beautiful this is. I love that you can open the drawer and you can see everything. That is one thing we didn't have in our old kitchen. Everything was in very deep cupboards and I couldn't find anything to save my life. So this is a much better storage solution than having a very large, wide drawer and very shallow. So you can lay everything out and see it in a single layer. So in this drawer, we store our cutlery, our knives, and also some utensils that I use very frequently for cooking. So I have our rasps in here, some vegetable peelers, um, lemon reamer, can opener, stuff like that. And we also have our butcher's block full of knives. I love this. It keeps everything super organized. You can find all your knives too. We also made some custom dividers in here and we made them out of oak board. Um, it's called Oak Hobby Board and we got it from Home Depot. It's relatively cheap, four or five bucks for about a four foot board. And all we did was just cut it up to size to make sure everything will fit in the compartments that we wanted it. So we love that we did a little custom piece and it was definitely way better than anything that we could have bought. And in our second drawer here, I like to call this my filming drawer because I have all the things that I need to film videos enclosed in this drawer and it's all organized. I have all of my little bowls here. So all my little glass bowls so you can see all the ingredients that are inside. I also have our mixing bowls and serving bowls in here as well as my measuring cups. So that is all readily available and handy to me as I film. 
So we do have quite a bit of cutting boards. I want to show you our storage solution for storing these. All we did was we bought a little pig system from Ikea. It's just plastic pigs. I think they were like $18 for a pack and I actually split the pack up into different um, like sections that I'll show you throughout the kitchen. But for the cutting boards, we decided to store them with this pig system and store them vertically so that we can see what cutting board we need and it's very easily accessible. Okay, next up we have my baking drawer, which I like to call it because I have all of my specialty baking stuff stored in here. And really, I don't bake that much. It's very rarely that I bake something, but with baking, you need so many tools. And I think once you have them, you have them forever, which is great. So they do take up quite a bit of space, but it's very good because we organize it with our storage solution on making our custom oak board dividers. So in this drawer, I have my rolling pins and my silicone mat for rolling everything out on the counter. I have my thermometers in here and there's actually about five thermometers in here. I didn't know I had that many, but you need them for different things. So we have a variety. We also have our colanders in here, our little sifters, um, some spatulas, whisks. We also have some pastry brushes in here our measuring cups and measuring spoons, and just fun little utensils like ice cream scoops and oyster shucker, kind of random things in here, but it's all good, it's all organized, and whenever we need to access anything for baking or otherwise, is all visible in this drawer. Okay, and before we move on to our next drawer, I wanna talk about the handles because you've probably been wondering, where are these amazing handles from? These handles are from a store in England. It is called Yester Home, and they have amazing cabinet hardware. Everything on their website was so beautiful, and they have really fast shipping to Canada, which is really great. And then on our drawers, we put all of these bow handles on. In our cupboards, we have little knobs, which I'll show you in a bit. But they are super gorgeous. I love them. And again, everyone who has come to see our kitchen has absolutely loved these. So. Yester Home is an amazing source for cabinet hardware. So now in our second drawer down here, we have a little bit of a storage drawer for some of our appliances. So I have my mixer and immersion blender, cheese grater, mortar and pestle. We also have some food storage in here for now. We have some working culture bread. Let's see what's in here. Uh, tomato danishes. That's gonna be for our breakfast tomorrow. I also now have a salad spinner and it's something really weird to get excited about, but every time I need to wash anything, I put it in the salad spinner and it is so nice and I'm very happy now that we have space for one. And then I also have a collection of Le Creuset items. I have a brazier, I have a tea kettle, and these very nice dishes that my sister got for us. We use these very frequently and they're great. They go in the oven, microwave, they are gorgeous and they are in the oyster color. So oyster and artichoke, that is our Le Creuset color scheme for our kitchen and I love it. So these are very nice to have as well. We have a bunch of baking dishes. I have them all stored vertically using the same Ikea peg system that we used for our cutting boards. So I took the other half of it and made my own peg system on the side for the baking dishes. At the end of the peninsula, we have a very nice design feature. We have a hutch. Now the hutch wasn't in our original design for our kitchen initially, but when we went to the showroom here in Victoria, ICANN, they did our cabinet installation and everything. We saw this in the ICANN showroom and we fell in love. It was so beautiful and we knew instantly we had to have it in the kitchen. The original plan was actually to do some open wood shelving over here, but it's kind of impractical for how much I cook and how much I get things dirty. Having things out in the open isn't really that practical. It looks nice, but really, I think in real life, it's not that practical. So we decided to do a hutch and everything is enclosed, keeps it dust free and cat hair free, which is very important. So on the top here, we have three glass shelves with different items on it. The very top, I have a nice wood bowl and some serveware. I also have my favorite cookbooks all displayed in here. I also have a very, very nice cake stand from Crate and Barrel. And I also have my Le Creuset pots in here. Again, before they didn't live in the kitchen, they actually lived in our back room. So now I'm very happy that they have a nice place in our kitchen to be showcased and seen because they are really beautiful pots. And the hutch is such a beautiful design feature in the kitchen that we decided to add this beautiful brushed satin brass latch. And it is super fun. I stand here all the time and just open and close these, but it's very, very nice. Little accent, I think makes a big difference, but 
when you open it, you can easily access all of the amazing things that are in here. And I have a few fall decorations because it is September, so we have our fall stuff in there already. And we also have some drawers underneath, which is really great. In our top drawer, I like to call this our party drawer. So we have like fun napkins, napkin rings, and little serving things like cake knives and stuff like that. So that's all easily accessible from when we have parties. Everything's in here and easy to get. And then in here, we have storage for all of our tea towels, our dish towels, and all of the beautiful napkins that I have for entertaining. Again, these didn't live in our kitchen before. Those were in one of our bedrooms. So it's nice to have everything in the kitchen and ready for when you need it. And next up, we have our corner cabinet, and this is where we store all of our appliances. So things that we have and we use pretty regularly, but we don't wanna keep out on the counter. So Ikea has this really great system where you can just swivel out the shelves and all of your appliances or whatever you keep in here comes to you. This system is really great. And as I said, we keep all of our appliances in here. So we have our Vitamix blender. And then on the bottom here, we have our mini food processor, our toaster, our crock pot, and our pasta machine. So I love that everything is so much easier to access and put back and you're not shuffling through a corner cabinet. Much, much easier with this system. So next up we have our sink area and this is a major upgrade from what we had before. I think our old sink was probably about this big, maybe that deep. And now with this larger sink, we are just over the moon. We absolutely love it. You can wash everything in here. So it is a stainless steel sink, which I think is very nice, really timeless. And our sink and our faucet is actually from a company called Pearl, which when we saw this, we were like, we have to have the sink because Pearl is the name of our cat. So we had to have a Pearl sink to match her. I know we're crazy, but even if it wasn't named Pearl, I would have still bought the sink and faucet combination because they are so gorgeous. I really love them. Um, the sink is called, I believe, Hannah PM Geo, which is kind of a weird name, but that's what it's called. And then the faucet is called a Lennox 2 faucet and the faucet has a really nice uh, little sprayer so you can adjust and you can spray down all the sides of your sink. I think if you're looking for faucets, this is a really nice feature to have. Um, I know there's lots of bells and whistles that faucets can have, but I think that this is the only thing you really need. So very, very nice to have that. And again, that the sink is so deep. When you put stuff in here, you can't even see it really when you're walking through the kitchen and super wide as well. So. We are very, very, very happy with the sink and faucet combination that we chose. So next up under our sink, we have our little garbage and cleaning supplies area, which nothing very nice to look at. So that's all hidden under the sink. And then right next to our sink, we have a little composting station. And I love having a little spot for the compost. And even though our composting bin is still like really cute, I love that it's kind of hidden behind the hutch and it's not the first thing you kind of see when we walk into the kitchen like it used to be. So she's hidden over here next to our little display cheese cutting board. Very, very nice. But yeah, she has a home now. So additionally, in our sink and washing up area, we also decided to install a beautiful quartz windowsill. And this is the same quartz that's on our countertop. We just got a piece cut to match the size for a windowsill. And we thought this would be a really, really nice feature because previously we had a wood windowsill. And just because it's so close to the sink, water would get on it and it was starting to get warped the paint was starting to peel and we didn't want to have to deal with that again so we decided to go with a little quartz slice and got that installed on our windowsill and it's very nice we don't have to worry about it rotting or warping or anything so we can keep all of our sponges and soaps we can splash water on it nothing bad's going to happen to it so if you have a similar setup of having a windowsill near your sink definitely go for the upgrade and add a little quartz sill you will love it trust me and above our sink and washing up area, we have these two beautiful lights. These are some sconce lights that I got from Wayfair. I was having such a hard time trying to find the perfect light to go above our sink area. But one day on Wayfair, I stumbled upon these and they were literally perfect. So I decided to get two to fill up the space a little bit more. And I think it was a really, really great idea. I love how balanced it makes the sink area feel and look and I love the brush color of the brass on it 
and the beautiful globe-shaped glass. I think it is super beautiful. Not only did the look of these lights really sell me on them, but also the name on Wayfair, it's called Ina, which Barefoot Contessa, like, it's perfect. So the Ina light from Wayfair, very, very nice, and I'm so happy with these. So to the left of our sink, we have a cupboard, and this is where we store all of our cups in, just our regular drinking glasses. Super simple, super accessible. And then right below, we have our dishwasher. We actually had to upgrade our dishwasher before kitchen renovation, but we got a really nice Bosch dishwasher, and it is so quiet, you can barely hear it running, which is amazing. As you can see so far, the kitchen has been fairly white and bright, so we wanted to add a little bit of color into our kitchen by painting our door. And this is just a door to our recycling room, but we painted it in this beautiful Benjamin Moore color. It's called High Park. I think the High Park color is the perfect shade of green. Green is such a fickle color, and we spent a long time trying to pick out the exact right green for our kitchen, but I think this was the perfect choice. It's very neutral, very beautiful, and it goes really nicely with all of our brass doorknobs, locks, hardware, all that fun stuff. So very, very happy with this little pop of green that we have in the back of our kitchen. So a great design feature that we included in our kitchen is some in-cabinet and under-cabinet lighting. And we have it on our switches here. So I'm gonna turn it on and look at how beautiful. It gives the most beautiful sheen the glow, not a sheen. <laughs> I think it gives such a nice glow to the cabinets. We have them recessed in the very top of our all of our glass cabinets, and we have some nice track lighting underneath the cabinets just so that everything is evenly illuminated. We also have it recessed in our hutch as well, and it adds a nice glow in there, and it just makes you feel super cozy, super fancy. We love the in-cabinet lighting that we did. All right, so next up we're on the back wall of the kitchen and here we have storage for all of our plates. Um, I like having all the plates in one area because I use different plates obviously for eating but also for taking pictures and stuff like that. So you have all the plates in one location and I can pick the exact one for what I need it for, which is very, very nice. We also have some very nice fancy French wine glasses up here as a display. We've never used these yet, but hopefully one day we will use them because they are super beautiful. And I think it's really nice for when you have glass cabinets that you can see through. It's really great to have a really nice dishware and all of our stuff is from Crate and Barrel. So they make really good stuff, really beautiful, aesthetic, and very durable as well. So all of our dishes are basically from there. All right, next to our stove here, we have a little storage area for all of our utensils. Everything I need to cook with immediately at the stove is stored here. And then we also have my beautiful piece of petrified wood and it's acting as a little display for our pepper, our salt and our olive oil. I love this pepper mill from Le Creuset. I actually got it as like a kitchen present <laughs> to me from me. But yeah, it's beautiful. It's in the artichoke color and the green is just like, we're going for the green here, clearly. Clearly, we match. <laughs> and I also have the matching olive oil bottle, which is very nice as well. And in our drawers next to the stove, we have our top drawer, and I'm so proud of this drawer. This is my beautiful spice drawer. And a lot of people say, don't store your spices near the stove, it's gonna cause them to go bad, but honestly, with the amount of cooking that I do, I fly through these, so nothing in here is ever gonna go bad. And once again, I love that I can open the drawer and see everything that I need, so it makes cooking a lot easier. And then in the drawer underneath it, don't come for me, environmentalists. We have our Ziploc storage bags. Also have some eco-friendly things in here, so don't worry. We have some compost bags. We have our beautiful beeswax wraps for wrapping up fruits and vegetables. And then we also have our parchment paper, aluminum foil, and our cling wrap, which I think you always need in the kitchen anyways. So we have all those conveniently located right next to the stove. And then in the bottom, we have our Tupperware drawer. I feel like sometimes everyone's Tupperware drawer is a mess. I can definitely say that this is much more organized than how we had it before. I love having the deep drawer so we can stack everything, lay everything out so we can see it. Very, very nice, but yeah, it's a Tupperware drawer. Everyone has one and sometimes they get a little messy, but Tupperware is all in one place. So next up, we have the big feature of our kitchen. We have our range. When we were picking what range we wanted, we were really debating between induction and gas. 
We're weighing the pros and cons, but we went with induction because we don't have a gas line to our house. We'd have to have one hooked up and installed, which would have been fairly costly. And induction was kind of an easier solution for us in that sense. So just plug it into the wall and we're good to go. But I am very happy that we did go with induction because this heats up so fast. You put a pot on and the water boils in 45 seconds, which is crazy and it's super sleek and easy to clean. I've had gas stoves in the past where you have to take off the grates, clean it all, wipe the surface down, clean the little burners. It's a pain. So we decided to go with induction for also cleaning purposes as well. So overall, I really like the look of the stove. I love the knobs on here. It makes me feel like a real chef. And when you turn them on, they actually light up, which is super cool. I love that feature. And it has a really great selection of different cook modes on here. There's even an air fryer built into this stove, which is amazing. We've never had an air fryer before, but one less appliance that we need. It's also super nice because it has this really nice track that you can pull out and you can have the rack all ready for you so you don't have to reach into the oven. Very, very nice feature. Also like safety wise, it's nice to have that. So yeah, very nice oven, really good capacity as well. Uh, for Thanksgiving, we cooked a turkey in here. It fit, we had to take out a top rack, but that was totally fine. In the bottom, we have a warming drawer and we don't actually use the warming drawer functions, but you could if you wanted to. We just use it to store some sheet pans for baking stuff in the oven. And above our stove, we have our range hood here and this range hood we had in our old kitchen and we saved it because we didn't want to get rid of it. We weren't changing the size of our range so we could keep the same range hood. So very, very nice, really simple stainless steel, really nice, easy to clean. It has a fan, it has a light everything you need in a range hood. So saved a couple thousand dollars by reusing this. And honestly, it's in perfect condition. So why would we get rid of it? And as you can see behind our range and along all of our countertops, we have a beautiful tiled backsplash. And we looked at a lot of options for tiled backsplashes, different colors, different shapes. There's a lot of stuff out there. But in the end, we settled on this beautiful white picket tile, or it's also called a kite tile as well, just because of the shape. And instead of installing it horizontally, we actually decided to install it vertically. So it makes the kitchen look a bit taller and it just looks really, really nice. It reminds me of a cozy knitted sweater, just seeing all the tiles together. And I love it. It's like the best. And we also did it in a gray grout, which originally I didn't want to do. I think it was going to look a little bit too cool, but the beige colored grouts just looked dirty and that was not the look I was going for. So in the end, we decided on the frost grout from MAPE and I think it was the perfect choice. Even though it is gray, it really ties in the gray stainless steel, the gray accents that I have around the kitchen. I think it is a very good choice. I love that we did it around the entire kitchen to the ceiling on both walls here. I think it was a really great choice for tile. To the left of our range, we have some more cabinets here. So we have a glass cabinet to display all of our beautiful bowls in. We got nice big soup bowls, popcorn bowls, all that stuff really easily accessible and all in one place here. And then right next to it, we have a cupboard full of Pearl's food and our medicines. And then on the bottom, we have this drawer, which is almost the bane of my existence during the kitchen renovation, but we have all of our oils and vinegars and soy sauces that I use for cooking on a regular basis. And with the amount of cooking that I do, I have a lot because I do need the variety for creating different dishes. And with the height of some of these oils and vinegars and soy sauces, we actually had to have the height of the top drawer modified. So I can, the people who install their kitchen were able to do that, but it took a lot of work and a lot of back and forth to kind of get it exactly how we wanted it. So if you are looking at a similar drawer to store all of your oils and vinegars in, I would be super cautious, measure the height of your standard oil and vinegar bottles and make sure that they fit or make sure that it can be modified because we just made the assumption that everything would fit, but not always fair to assume things. But either way, it was fixed and very nice to have all of my oils, vinegars, and soy sauces super easily and accessible to me as I'm cooking. And then over here in the corner, we have another fun corner cabinet from Ikea. This is a little bit different than the one that we had on the other side, but it's basically like a carousel and you can spin all your pots and pans around, easily have access to them. I really, really enjoy that. So it holds a lot of stuff as well. So you can really pack that full of pots and pans, but 
really like that and also soft no not soft clothes <gasps> ikea do better come on <laughs> that's the only thing in here that's not soft clothes but it's not the end of the world it is a very nice corner cabinet Now, a really nice feature in our kitchen that we really wanted was a little coffee station. And it sounds pretty basic, but we have a really, really nice Breville coffee machine and we make lattes, we make Americanos with it all the time. And it does take up a lot of room, but it's a very, very good machine and it looks really nice. So we wanted to have a nice area for it to be displayed at. So we decided to make a little coffee station. So we have our Breville Barista Express machine here. We also have the matching Breville kettle. We also have the matching Breville microwave. Not necessarily part of the coffee station, but the Breville trio is here. They're thriving. And also at the coffee station, it's really nice to have access to your mugs. So we have all of our mugs stored in this cupboard here. So whenever we're making a coffee, we can just grab our mugs, make our coffee, and it's perfect. And if we wanna make a tea or anything like that, or need different utensils for making coffee, we have that all accessible in these drawers. We have a lot of tea. <laughs> so we have actually like three drawers packed full of tea, but this is just our top drawer. Really nice like display of teas and stuff like that. Then we have our more larger tins of tea, which are really nice. We also have David's secret weapon for making his famous lattes. This is what makes the lattes taste so good. Sorry, David, I'm revealing all your secrets. We have that in there. We also have coffee grinder, French press, all that fun stuff. So no matter what you want, if you want a coffee or a tea, it's all available in this section and very easy to get at. And as I mentioned, we have our microwave right above our coffee station. Um, very nice Breville microwave. I love the look of it. Very, very nice. And on the very top, I have some baking dishes. And the baking dishes, I also use the IKEA pegboard solution um, to store all of my baking pans. These are mostly my cake pans. And I love that I can just like grab one, slide it out, easy to access. And yeah, very, very nice. So all of my baking stuff is up there. And next up on our fridge wall, we have our fridge. And we've had this fridge since before we renovated the kitchen and we are very protective of it because it is super beautiful. It is from a company called Fisher and Paykel and it's from New Zealand. So very, very fancy brand, not too well known in North America yet. I think they're starting to get a little bit more and more popular, but we went with this beautiful fridge because of the inside. Well, the outside is gorgeous, but the inside, wait till you see. So this is the inside of our fridge and as you can see it has these really nice big glass shelves. You can put a bunch of stuff on it, you can see everything. We love this so much and we love that the fridge is actually on top of the freezer. It makes getting things like produce a lot easier rather than having to bend over to grab stuff like that. I want to show you this really fun feature. They would come in a little bit closer show everyone we got this amazing tray from ikea you can actually pull it out and it swivels so you can grab everything that you need and not have to rummage through the back of your fridge isn't that amazing ikea like come on they're like they know what's up but yeah very very happy with that little storage solution really nice glass shelves really nice large produce drawer and vegetable drawer and I also really like all the shelves that are on the inside of the door. As you can see, I have a lot of sauces because I cook so much, so everything is easily accessible and I can see everything. So it's really the theme, accessibility and being able to see it. So <laughs> we have to have that in all aspects of the kitchen. We also have a pull-out freezer. This isn't very well organized, but really this is what it looks like. Really nice, we don't use as many things from the freezer, so. I think it's very nice to have that at the very bottom. And then above our fridge, we have a little storage area. And I did this for our hot pot machine because hot pot is our priority. So we have our induction burner and our hot pot pot. And then next to that, I have some storage for some pans that I have. These I don't really use very often, like my cupcake pans or this like fun little cake tin or my pizza paddle, things like that that I use rarely but still want it to be accessible and easy to grab so we have those all stacked up and those are also using the ikea pegboard system so 
Very, very good system overall. I really like it. Now, we didn't have a pantry in our old kitchen, but this was on my list to have in our dream kitchen. So when we did the renovation and the design for the kitchen, pantry was the priority. So show you what's inside. Again, this is obviously an Ikea pantry and I absolutely love it. On the top I have just sort of extra things. I have cans of tomatoes. I also have my homemade tomato sauce. Isn't that beautiful? And look how nice it looks in there. The shelf just makes me so happy. All the tomatoes. <laughs> uh, then we have a pasta shelf. Yes, we have an entire shelf dedicated to pasta. And then below we have some just like staple pantry items like honey. We have gojujang, um, some nori for cocky seasoning. And then below that we have my baking shelf. And whenever I bake, I'm normally always gonna take out my all-purpose flour and my homemade vanilla. And once those are out, I can easily get at all these other fun things in the back. I have all of my um, other flavorings, cornstarch, baking cups, cocoa powder, all that nice stuff is stored in the back here. I'm happy all of my baking stuff is contained because before it was all over the kitchen. So we have a nice dedicated baking shelf and that makes me so happy. Okay, and right below that, possibly a drawer that makes me even happier than the baking shelf is a really nice storage container drawer. We have a bunch of different dried goods in these glass jars. Again, all from Ikea. I think it's called the Corkin jar. They come in various sizes. But anyways, we have stuff like woodier mushrooms in here, popcorn, uh, pepitas, goji berries. Again, all very easily accessible by having these pull-out drawers. You can just reach in and grab whatever you need and then close up the drawer, which is amazing. Similarly down here, we have another storage drawer for our jars. And in here we have more bigger bulk items like our sugar, our rice, um, oatmeal. We also have, <laughs> you guys are gonna laugh. We have a storage jar of boba pearls. Our friend Wally gave this to us, a huge package of boba pearls and we still have them, but we're keeping it nice and fresh in these beautiful jars, but yeah, we got our bobas <laughs> all organized. And then in the very bottom drawer, we just have some backup things. So we have our extra flour, extra rice, cornstarch, fun little things like that. So that's all stored on the bottom. So when we need to refill our jars, we can do that really easily. Yeah, that is our pantry. So, so happy with it. Okay, and a fun thing that we did in our kitchen on the side of our pantry is a nice little display of some of our favorite things. So on the top, we have a beautiful frame picture. I think this adds a lot of really nice seasonality to the kitchen because that's what my whole blog, my whole thing is all about is the seasons. So I'm able to switch out the prints in this beautiful photo frame and have it change throughout the season. So we can have that tie in with everything else going on. And then right below the picture frame, I have this beautiful display shelf of some cookbooks. So I have Ina Garten's Modern Comfort Food book. I also actually have another one of her cookbooks the cooking for Jeffrey, <laughs> but I decided to cover up Jeffrey's face with the latest edition of Edible Vancouver Island Magazine. And then below that, I have some hooks with my oven mitts displayed on there, and also a basket with my season and serve vlog apron, which you're gonna see me wearing quite often in my cooking videos, so that's me. So overall, very happy with this display and how it turned out. I love that we have some more color in here, some more seasonal interest, and I like that I can display my cookbooks now. And one day, my cookbook will be next to Ina's cookbook because the cookbook is still in progress. If we didn't know, I'm writing a cookbook. It's a lot of work, and it's gonna be really good when it comes out though. So, a little plug, but I'm gonna be very happy when I can see it right next to Ina Garten. It's gonna be amazing. Now at the end of the kitchen tour, I want to share some regrets that we had with some of the design choices we made in here. And there's only one major one, and it is the situation above our fridge here. As you can see, there's a white panel that goes across. And because our fridge is from New Zealand, it is a really weird size. It's not the standard North American size where Ikea cabinets will fit all around it. So we had to come up with a little design feature above it just to enclose the space but I feel like this panel is just kind of awkward. I think we can actually take it off and probably put some woven uh, wicker baskets up here to have some storage. 
Um, I think that would just be a nicer design choice. I also have the same situation going on above our microwave. So there is quite a large space happening here that I think, you know, if you put a couple baskets up here, it'll be a lot more nicer and a little bit more cohesive in the kitchen rather than having this really large space. But again, super easy fix and we will tackle that eventually. So we made it around the kitchen and now we're on the outside of the peninsula. And as you can see, we have the side and the front all wrapped in this beautiful cabinet material. And these cabinet fronts are called Askerson from Ikea. So we mixed the Axtad and the Askerson and I think it added a little bit more visual interest and the wood look really brings through that west coast feel that we're going for in our home. Again on the peninsula we did want storage on this side over bar seating because again we're not bar seating people we figured we would never use it and we would rather have it for storage and we have put the storage to very good use so far. Before I guess we get into the cabinets, I will say that we did get a nice brushed satin brass handle. It is a hidden handle, which is really nice. You can just grab onto and you don't really see it, which is what I wanted on this front of the cabinets here. We have our wine cabinet. So as you can see, we have tons of wine, lots of stuff from Blue Grouse, our favorite winery. And we also have all of our glasses. We have some short wine glasses, our white wine glasses, and our red wine glasses, and some champagne flutes here as well. If you want a glass of wine, you can just come over to this cupboard, open one up, and we're good to go. And then in our second set of cabinets, we have more liquor. <laughs> we have more alcohol. So in the bottom, we have some of our favorite spirits, lots of great local stuff from Victoria Distillery, Sheringham, Rootside, um, Esquimalt, Vermouth. We have all the good local stuff in here. So we have it all nicely displayed in terms of height so you can see everything and you can pick out what you want. And then on top, we have all of our cocktail glasses. We have our rocks glasses. We also have this really nice crystal bottle and really good for things like simple syrups. If you're making cocktails, just fill it up and add it to your drinks as needed. We also have our collection of shot glasses, our cocktail shaker, and some very nice coupe glasses as well. We have all of our cocktail glasses and all of the fun ingredients for making nice cocktails all organized in this cupboard. And then in our final cupboard, we just kind of have a mishmash of things. I have a bunch of vases in here, which I didn't have proper storage for before. So very happy again that all of my vases are in one place. We also have some extra wine glasses on the bottom there with some larger jugs for storing juices and stuff. And then we also have some water bottles and our coffee tumblers, our to-go cups. Okay, and next up I wanna show you our sitting room because again, when we removed the fireplace, the kitchen and sitting room became one big room and we did some major upgrades in here. So the first major thing that we did in the sitting room was build our window bench. And I love window benches. I've always loved them since I was a kid. I just think they're super fancy and I love the idea of just kinda of hanging out Walk, looking outside, reading a book, doing fun stuff like that. So on the window bench here, we have some beautiful pillows. They're from a local company called Marin and Firth, and we chose them in all beautiful colors. So we have our taupes, our whites, and our greens. So everything kind of matches together. And we also have, for now, this is like a lounge chair pillow from Ikea, but it's taupe and it kind of goes through now. We do want to get a custom one made, nice long uh, pillow for the window bench, but it's going to cost like a thousand dollars and we are not prepared to spend that much money on a pillow. So this definitely works for now. And as you can see, Pearl absolutely loves it. She loves sitting here. If you come to our house, you can often see her just looking out the window here. It is the cutest thing. Everything was for you, honey. Yes. She loves the window bench. So another great feature that we did with this window bench was actually made storage underneath it. And I'm not gonna move it now because Pearl's sleeping, but once you take off all the pillows, you can actually lift the top lids up and there's storage underneath it. So for now, we have some of Pearl's stuff in there, like her pet carrier and her little backpack. 
So we have lots of space for stuff in there. So for a sitting room, we didn't really change it too much in terms of layout. Again, the fireplace was here. So before we had the same setup where we had our couch, our coffee table and our TV all displayed here. This is really nice just for chilling, lounging in, watching TV. And it's really nice that now as I'm cooking and developing recipes, I can be there and I can watch TV as I do it. So very, very nice. I'm happy that we did that. Another fun design feature that we did in our sitting room was to add this beautiful wainscoting or also known as a board and batten wall. So overall, I think the board and batten wall was a really good choice. It makes it overall feel a little bit more homey and cozy in here and a little bit fancier too, which I think looks really great in our home and our style. So we did this all ourselves. It was a process especially because none of the walls in here are straight. So that was fun trying to figure that out. And yeah, took us a little bit, but we got it figured out. And in the end, I think it turned out really, really nice. And in terms of colors that we chose, we went with some Benjamin Moore colors for the board and batten here. We did it in a color called Super White. It has a very high reflective white index, but not as bright as Chantilly Lace, which was our other um, contender, but I think this one turned out perfectly. And in terms of paint finish, we actually did this in a finish called Pearl, also known as a satin finish. Um, but we did this because we didn't really want the high gloss look, like a gloss or a semi-gloss. We wanted something a little bit more matte and durable, and the Pearl finish was perfect. Also again, because of Pearl. No, I'm kidding. It's like actually the perfect finish for us. Not too glossy, but nice in between and really durable. We also carried the super white color up into our coving and the coving was originally here in the sitting room. However, when we had the fireplace, the coving stopped at about here and our contractor is really great. He figured out how to continue the coving all the way into the kitchen so it makes the space kind of come together and feel like one. So we are very, very happy with how that turned out. And again, that's in the super white with the pearl finish. And then in terms of our wall color, we went with a color called Pale Oak from Benjamin Moore. And I think this was a very, very good color choice. It is a nice light taupey color. It adds some nice warmth to the space and makes things seem really bright and fresh and modern, which I think is really nice in the space. And that is it for our kitchen tour. It was a long process, but we are so happy with how it turned out. It is truly our dream kitchen. So if you have any questions about the kitchen or want to know more about any of the items that you saw in my kitchen today, leave a comment down below and I will get back to you with an answer. I respond to all my comments and I love chatting with you guys. So if you want to know absolutely anything, leave it in the comments below. And that is it for today. Stay tuned for some amazing cooking videos in our amazing kitchen. This is gonna be my backdrop from now on. And I am so excited to make some amazing recipes for you in our dream kitchen. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.